Got it. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you Hello. for joining us today. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Denise Jamerson with Legacy Taste of the Garden. Um, today, we're with Robin from Urban Seeds. This is Robin from Urban Seeds in, in partnership with the ABLP, EVPL, Evansville Vandenberg Public Library, uh, for our second series in our book and cook our book and cook events. Um, today we're gonna to be making sheet pan veggie stir fry and we're gonna be using some of our local produce um, from the area and we're gonna make this delicious dish. So now I wanna hand it over to Miss Robin. Um, she's gonna be the one that's showing you guys and instructing you on how to do this today. So we'll let Miss Robin take it away and let the fun begin. By the way, the funny thing is we had stir fry for dinner last night and we're going to have it for lunch. So I'm going to eat my stir fry for lunch, too. I mean, we're having. Well, we're going to have double our stir fry. That, that's <laughs> good. Ne never it's going to be hard to choose between to my stir fry or mom's stir fry. Um, so I also want to thank our partner here at Trinity United Methodist Church. We work out of this lovely kitchen and we partner with them on many events. So I wanna be sure to give them a shout out as well. I also wanna thank Charles Sutton and Katie Pritchett from Evansville Vandenberg Public Library for doing the background uh, tech piece to all of this. So what I would like yes. to do for starters is to have you take all of your ingredients out of your bag and have them on your counter. So if you could take out everything that you receive, we're going to go over each item one by one before we start cooking. Dum dum that ahead of time. Is that and you may already have that done. Is that right? Are you all ready to go? So if I hold up this first bag, can somebody tell me what's in this bag, please? Mm. Broccoli. Uh, this bag right here. Yeah, yes, Magnolia. Can you tell me, please? Peppers, um, cauliflower, and I think that's it. Onions. And what have, then there's there's little tiny slices of yes, mm -hmm. Julian or Tristan. Carrots. No, not carrots in here. There's red peppers. Yellow peppers, green peppers, cauliflower, and magnolia. Onions? They're green onions or scallions. So a green onion was put in here as well. And then what about this bag? Now that one's broccoli. Yes. yes. Let, let's have everybody, if you don't mind, raise your hand so we can all uh, get in on this together. I'm going to ask you to open up the broccoli bag. And just okay. gently take a sniff. And what's the flavor you smell there? There's a, a, an herb in there. What is the flavor you smell in the broccoli? Besides the broccoli, there's a pretty, and you can see- Garlic? Chunks of it, pardon? Garlic? Garlic, That's very good. good yes, there, there's garlic in there we mix the garlic into the broccoli and then go ahead and open up the cauliflower pepper bag and what do you smell in there is it sweet is it strong what do you smell more garlic <laughs> not not in I there you goodness. might have garlic in your that's nose that's what it smells like okay can you make me know and pepper. For me, when I smell that, I could I could smell the the peppers for sure, a sweet smell. You've got a little bag of grated carrots, and you'll see inside your grated carrots is a little nubbin of who knows what this is. Go ahead and smell this, and who knows what this is? This little round or square nubbin. Garlic. Uh, Andrea. Oh, that's uh, that's Andrea's kids. Yes. Ginger. Ginger, uh, well, you can go ahead and set the ginger aside and we're gonna come back to that a little bit later, but very, very good, I'm glad you knew that. Okay, this paper cup is, you can take the lid off gently and take a gentle whiff of that. Who knows what that is, please? 
Magnolia. Soy sauce. Excellent. That's the soy sauce. It smells like mushrooms. It smells like. What did you say? Mushrooms. 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 Yeah, that's what it smells like. Interesting. Mushrooms are very earthy. Yes. Now you've got this container where you can see that there's two kinds of liquids in here, an oil at the bottom and some other flavors on top. Take the lid off gently. And what do you think that smells like? Isn't that nice? <laughs> what, what are my favorite smells? And, uh, Magno uh, Magnolia? What does that smell like? Pardon me? Took a little taste and it doesn't taste like Can anything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you guys a hint. Some of this stuff may be on your recipe card. Some of those smells. Yes, Magnolia. Vinegar? Uh, well, there's actually a little bit of rice wine vinegar. You've got a very good sniffer there. Very good. And Marie, what do you smell? Peanuts. Peanuts. Well, again, good, good, good guess, although we didn't use peanut oil in this recipe. Does anybody know why we try to avoid peanuts when we're in a group? Because peanuts, because some people are allergic to peanuts. Very good. Some, right. some people are allergic to peanuts. So the, the smell that, that for me is very strong here is sesame oil. And that's a really common flavor for uh, Asian food or, or any kind of Chinese stir fry. Okay, here's a container with some grated uh, vegetable in it. Can you take the lid off and tell me what this is? Take the lid off, smell something else. I don't even have to smell it with the lid off. Oh. It's too strong. Oh, well, it's, a, it's another key ingredient. And I'll tell you what, it's- yeah. Treaded ginger. It's, it's very good. Um, yes, yeah, so Too this strong. is grated ginger. Ginger. You'll see in the recipe that it calls for grated ginger, but we didn't know who of you had graters at home. So we went ahead and provided some pre-grated ginger. But again, we're going to come back to this chunk a little bit. Okay, we've got another cup, which probably it's a ginger. doesn't have a smell. But if you look at your recipe, you'll see that this is a combination of the brown sugar and the cornstarch. Does anybody know what cornstarch does in a recipe? This is kind of advanced cooking skill. What does cornstarch do when you add it to a recipe? Anybody guess? Marie? Marie? It thickens it. Say it again, babe. It thickens it. Thickens, excellent. Way to go. Cornstarch adds a thickener and we're gonna wanna add that. And then the last cup you have which we're going to save for the end. Can anybody look inside and tell me what these little guys are here? There's there some sort of seeds. Yes, what kind? Sesame seeds. Sesame seed, yes. So you can go ahead and set the sesame seed off to the side for now because we're going to put those on at the very end. So I'm gonna we've use, got all of I, our ingredients. I could use um, sesame oil. We have that. Well, we have sesame oil, which is a very concentrated kind of sesame. You take sesame seeds, you crush them, you get the fat out of the sesame seed. Ooh. These are actually toasted and it's very concentrated. Let me remind you all to either have your grown up or you go ahead and preheat your oven now to 425 degrees. You're going to want to put this dish into a hot oven. Mom, preheat the so, oven to 425 degrees. 425. Go ahead and get that ready. If anybody needs to step away, go ahead and do that now, but 425 degrees. Okay, so we're, what I want to say about recipes is that recipes are a suggestion. A recipe doesn't need to be followed exactly. And that's part of the comfort that you gain when you start to cook a little bit more often. Now, the difference is if you're baking, sometimes you have to be more exact, but you'll see that we provided this recipe, but we're gonna step away from it from time to time. And that's okay because the dish is still gonna come out to be just beautiful. One of the ways we're gonna take or step away from the recipe is by starting to put the oil 
the sesame oil with the rice wine vinegar into the bottom of the pan. Go ahead and dump the whole thing in. Glass How big a pan? Oh, we need the glass one. And, and uh, oh either God. use a spoon or your clean fingers to get all of it out. Yeah. Gross. This looks like blood. What's the directions? Oh, and, and actually, red. what makes it red like that? I forgot one other ingredient oh, in there. If you look at your recipe, you might guess it. It's very hot and flavorful. And mom, I don't know what we're doing. That, that, that's the Sri Racha sauce, Sri Racha. It's gonna add a whole lot of nice flavor. Uh -oh. and, and pardon me, I neglected to say that you should have had your glass pan out. I'm assuming that occurred. And if not, go ahead and take a minute, but you all have a glass cooking pan. You, want, you see what I'm doing here? Just swirling around the oil so that the bottom of the pan gets coated. Who can tell me why I'm oiling the pan before we put anything in it? Any ideas? Magnolia? So it doesn't stick to the pan. So it doesn't stick to the pan. That's a simple rule, but yes, you wanna always oil the pan first, no matter what you're cooking. So we're going to follow the, is there a question? Mm -hmm. She has this in a bowl. Oh. Chris does. Chris, are you gonna be able to pour yours into your baking dish? Yeah, we're we're actually not gonna cook ours right now. Oh, okay. okay. That's, so, that's fine. That's but, perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I have his baking that's, sheet here, okay. so we're we're not gonna we're not gonna cook ours right now. So that's we're gonna fine. have it for supper. <laughs> and those of you at and Andrea's house, you want to be sure to get all that flavor out of your bowl and into your pan. Hi, Andrea. So we're going to start with the bag that's got the peppers and the cauliflower and uh, green onions in here. And what goes dump, to the pan? Gonna bye dump, bye guys. Dump those into the pan. And as we mentioned last week, and I'll continue bye -bye. to mention, they're all gone. Ziploc bag is heavy duty. You can have your spread it all around. Wash it real well with soapy water and let it dry. And then you can use this okay, again and again before it has to go into the trash. What's to do in the bowl first? This smells like popcorn. So you're gonna go it, you're gonna go ahead and, and you have your vegetables in. We're going to add half of the soy sauce. So you've got about five or six ounces in your brown cup. Go ahead and pour about half in. You can just kind of look at it. Pour about half in and set the rest aside. I know, but it was in there and there's something that was supposed to go first. It was this. How are y'all doing with that part of it, of putting in the soy sauce? Okay. okay. How am I going to know if I've done half? We're going to add the grated ginger next. Anyway. Everybody ready to add the grated ginger? Yeah. Yeah. And you can kind of drop it off in little bits and pieces into your- Actually, I wait, let me guess. <laughs> that already smells to so good. Yeah, well, Elliot, you're not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what your cornstarch and brown sugar looks like, but I've got a couple clumps of brown sugar in my container. So I'm just gonna gently break those up so that the brown sugar is mixed into the cornstarch. And I am going to take a big pinch of it and just pour it over. Not the whole thing, we'll save the other half for the rest of the veggies. We didn't get brown, what is it called? Okay, how's everybody doing? You should have, and let's see if you can see this. I've got the cauliflower, peppers, and green onions. I've got the ginger. I've got the brown sugar and cornstarch, and I have half of the soy sauce. Is everybody caught up with all Are of that? Are we adding in the seed? Everybody uh -huh. good to go? So now you can take a spoon and mix that in. Why can I not get this? Are we adding in seeds? I can't get it to go big. Are we adding in any seeds yet? 
Okay, just put a little not bit. Yet. Not, not yet. We're going to do things in two stages today. <laughs> okay, I was just making sure I didn't miss that part if you were already Magnolia done. Magnolia has her hand up. Magnolia, what's up, honey? Wait, do we only use half of our um, ground sugar and uh, bacon? Yes, the okay. brown sugar and cornstarch will save the other half for later. So you want to get your vegetables coated with the liquids. And then at this point, this is going to go into your 425 preheated oven for about seven minutes. What about the broccoli? We're going to do that next, babe. We're doing that next. Okay. So, so everybody ready to put the first part into the oven? Yep, I'm going out and I'm saying the timer okay. too, just to make sure it's perfect. And whether you have your own timer or whether you have a grown up there, set the timer for seven minutes once it's in the oven. And then we're going to ask a few questions and do a little conversation while that's cooking for seven minutes. So my first question is, why do you think we're cooking this in two parts in, in, in two different times? Push hard. You got to push really hard. There you go. Why do you think we're doing this in two different baking times? How long do I set the timer again? Seven minutes. Okay. Does anybody know why we're cooking the cauliflower and peppers first and we're going to come back to the broccoli and snow peas? Well, what about the it turns, it turns out that vegetables cook at a different rate. So vegetables that are very thick and hearty, like cauliflower and peppers, they take a little bit longer and you want them to be cooked more thoroughly than the broccoli and the snow peas and the carrots. Timer's so counting down. Has, does everybody, can you raise your hand, please, and tell me that you've got your, that you've got your, uh, dish in the oven. Does everybody have your dish in the oven? Me. Okay, excellent. So now I'm going to show you a couple uh, techniques for preparing food. If everybody would take their chunk of ginger and get yourself a teaspoon, a regular teaspoon. So take a moment to do that. Okay. A teaspoon of what? And, 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 no, it's just gonna. We're gonna use a spoon as a tool. Oh, so so the spoon's gonna be used to scrape. So we just need a sharp teaspoon. There you go. Doesn't even have to be sharp. Just a, a spoon. Good, good. So if you look at the ginger, some of you will have two ends that don't have any skin, but most of you will have at least two sides, maybe three that have the harsh skin on it. Do you all see that? Like a potato skin almost. Yeah. And the reason is of course that ginger grows underground. It's a root vegetable, R-O-O-T. I have two sides without skin and one side with skin. Let's go where the brown Here we go. sugar is. So we're gonna take the ginger with this spoon and hold it in your hand. And Watch you just hand. gently take the spoon and rub it along the sides and you can see that the peel is coming right off. Okay. Can you do that? This, this shouldn't be sharp or shouldn't be dangerous. So you should all be able to do that. So you see that the peel is coming off and it's exposing all of what we call the flesh, the ginger flesh or the fruit itself. I guess technically ginger is a vegetable. It's a, it's a root vegetable, yeah. So all of my skin is hanging, and then I'm going to just take the spoon and take it off the bottom. So we want to take all our skin off the ginger. Yes, and again, this is just a demonstration because you've already got plenty of ginger you in your off. dish, although if you love the flavor like I do, you could certainly use the rest of this. So ginger can be cut with a very sharp knife. Oh, which which we'll talk about knives in a moment, so please don't do that yet. Uh, or with a or, very dull spoon. Or if you have a grater, you can run it up and down a grater, which again, I wasn't sure if anybody had graters at home. 
Or you can use a potato peeler. Peeler, a potato I mean, peeler, which is also sharp, but even with the spoon, now that it's peeled, oh, don't do that. <laughs> so we're not, we're not, it popped out of my hand. We're not going to eat this. So I'll, I'll just keep on, on showing you. You could take your spoon and just gently keep peeling it. And you've got these nice strips of fresh ginger. Peel it on this one. Smell how, yeah, how pungent, that, how that strong thing. that smells. Oh yeah. Oh, you still want some skin. So I wanted to show you a way of, of making a food without having to use a specific Well, I'm not, tool, Elliot. In this case, the recipe calls for a grater. You could also do this with carrots. You could also do this with potatoes or any root vegetable. Did everybody get a chance to try that okay? Yeah, but I didn't peel much of it because use that on the white stuff. I didn't peel much of it though. I just did a little okay. spot. Okay. Well, it was I just wanted to show you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about in regards to prep are is, is how to cut a pepper. So yeah, this requires yeah. adult supervision. You've got the, the, well, you don't have a whole pepper with you because we peeled it or, or cut it for you, but this is a sharp knife. It's called a paring knife. P-A-R-I-N-G, paring knife. It's a small knife. It's a really essential kitchen tool. We haven't provided that to you in this cooking kit because we weren't sure how families would feel about having sharp knives, but a sharp knife is part of an important kitchen set. So I'm gonna show you this and with an adult, you can practice it next time you have a whole pepper. So you see that the pepper's got the stem. Two minutes to go. Thank you. So you cut, cut the top off. There's the two minutes to go should pop right out. And you see you've got a beautiful slice of red pepper that this can be roasted or baked or cut to small pieces. Then you've got the center. And what's in the center of this pepper? Anybody oh, tell me what this is? Exactly it's like some sort of white seed. Magnolia? Um, the seeds of the pit. Those are all the seeds, yes, and the fiber. So we don't want to cook these seeds. So there you go, that's your timer mm -hmm. and the hot mix are there. So you're going to reach inside and look, the seeds all come out in one chunk. So that is an easy way to remove pepper seeds. If you look inside again, you can see there's still a little bit of fiber in there. You can just tear it out with your fingers and now your pepper is clean and ready to cook ready to cut pardon me and now you can slice it well of course we don't have a pepper i can't wait no so you don't have a pepper because again we didn't want you to have to deal with the knives and guess what guess what you can do with all of these seeds if you save these seeds you can grow these peppers yourself Oh, wow. Just one, one seed, one of these little bitty seeds. No, no, you not very little. It's big. It's, it's, no, this is the seed. You have to look. If these are all seeds on the pepper, I can't see anything. These, this one pepper can make almost hundreds, hundreds of peppers. But you can save these seeds and grow them yourself, so that you can have your own. You can grow your own vegetables. So, Chris. Chris, I see you have a grater. Would you mind holding that up so that other the other students can see it? Does everybody see what Chris is holding up? That's an example of a grater, which you could use to grate your ginger if you had one. That's just one example. There's a few different kinds. My name's not Chris. So now your timer should be going off. And with hot mitts, you know, with, with, and you've all got one in your cook kit, you probably have some more at home. Go ahead and very carefully remove your hot dish of peppers and cauliflower and green onions and set it on something that won't burn your countertop. And then we'll finish up the preparation. I'm really confused. We must have missed a step or something. So I'll wait for you. Oh, yeah. If everybody could raise their hand when they're ready with their 
hot dish, you want to be really careful because this glass dish is hot. Okay, so glass pan, I see you ready. Yes, it already smells delicious. Yep. Yep. Very right. good. Chris, I see you're ready. I'm going to go check up on everyone. So Magnolia's ready. Marie, are you ready with now. your dish or were you not going to make it today? You're ready, okay? All the kids at Andrea's house, you ready? Yep. Uh -huh. I see you, Andrea. Mine's Andrea, still cooking. Yes. This is Dalton. <laughs> Dawson, thank you. Dalton. Mm -hmm. Dalton. Dalton, hi. Yep. Dalton, are you ready to go? Dalton. I feel like we missed a step. What was that, honey? I feel like we missed a step. You feel like you're ready for the next step? Okay. So now you're going to take your broccoli bag, which has got the garlic and the snow peas in it. You're going to remember the, the, the uh, glass plate is hot. So be careful. You're going to dump your vegetables in. Okay, I'm bringing it over to the now, stove. Now, for me, the garlic stuck to the bag a little bit, so I'm going to reach in because we want all that garlic and fl garlicky flavor. Oh, I see. We should have done that. There we go. First. Empty bag. Empty and, up. And, and that good, good job. And remember, that bag can be washed and reused. Um, we're going to take the carrots. Okay. And dump those in as well. And the garlic. Well, the garlic was already in your broccoli bag, honey. So oh, you, if you dump that broccoli bag, it should all be in. So you don't need to put this chunk of garlic in. No, that no. was just to show you how to fill it if you have some for another recipe. And, and as a matter of fact, you guys can keep this. And if you guys make smoothies, you can put it in your smoothies. Yep. Or if you have another recipe, you can keep Ready? it. Mom, or you can refrigerate it, right, Robin? Correct. You yes. can refrigerate yes. this. And did you know that ginger can also help you when you're sick? Like if you have an upset stomach or something like that, oh, yeah. ginger is a very good uh, vegetable that you can eat that will help settle your stomach. Yep. It's a powerful plant food. So you should have your broccoli and snow peas and carrots you on forgot top of the already cooked vegetables. Go ahead and very gently pour the rest of your soy sauce all over. Soy sauce all over. Even what about the seeds? The Not seeds yet. are going to be at the very end when everything's cooked. But okay. you should still also have half of the cornstarch and half of the brown sugar. Oh, you're almost out of it and you haven't done any of this yet. You so you're going to sprinkle that on. Are you talking about the seeds right now? No, we're talking okay. about the brown sugar and oh, the cornstarch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I have a little bit of trouble hearing sometimes. Yes, yes. That's okay. What else? And then once no. you've got the brown yeah, sugar and cornstarch and the soy sauce, you're going to go ahead and stir again. Yeah, <laughs> not the same. And it's okay if you bring the peppers yeah. and the cauliflower up to the top a little bit, uh, but you want to try to get everything That's coated nice. with the liquid and the oil and the cornstarch and brown sugar. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to choose my, uh, whatever I call it. I think this is my uh, stir fry. Hey, Lord, I tried to tell you that. I know. Okay. We'll go. It looks much better than mom's, according to me. I guess we probably do the garlic too. You might need to use the spoon to do it all out again. So you shouldn't see any of the powder on your vegetables. The powder should be mixed in enough. That's the cornstarch, uh, and everything should be wet enough that the cornstarch mm. has been absorbed into the sauce. Everybody mm. working on that? Not me. Oh, let's clean that up. Put that all in there. Do you want to hold that up, Denise, please? So this is what it looks like. Okay. All stirred in and you guys coated. See that pretty well. Asking, should the ginger go in yet? Should the ginger go in yet? Well, not, not this big chunk of ginger, but the ginger that we gave you grated in one of these little containers went in with the first batch. And if for some reason it didn't go in, you can certainly add it now. But this big chunk was just meant as a demonstration. Okay, okay. 
Yes, Magnolia. Are we supposed to put carrots? <coughs> the carrots were supposed to go in there as well. Yes. Hold on. And then you need to stir it. Really good. I'll get a bigger spoon. And, and you'll want to mix things up again, Magnolia, if you haven't already done so, to make sure the carrots are coated as well. You're doing great. So right now, mostly everything should be in your baking dish except the sesame seeds. All the garlic in one spot. And yep. the demonstration ginger. You don't put that in there. <laughs> so everything that you were given should be in the dish and you should be covering it with with your oil and your um, the juices in your bowl in your baking dish, so that all your vegetables kind of get covered, and you shouldn't see any white powder. So, Let's see what I'm doing? Yeah. Are you guys doing okay? Yeah. I'm doing great. It's all That's cooked. That's great. That's great. Um, Except for the seeds. So <laughs> the the last thing I wanted to talk about before we put this in the oven That's is. Good. When you look at this dish, with different peppers and the broccoli and the carrots and the cauliflower, what do you notice about the way it looks? What do you notice about the way this looks? It looks Anybody? spicy. Well, you can smell the spice, but what does it look like to your eyes without smelling? Colorful. Uh, yes, uh, Ju Juliet and Tristan. We were going to say colorful. Colorful. Thank you. That's exactly the perfect answer. Colorful. And one of the things I like to talk about is how important it is to eat the rainbow. And this would be representing the rainbow of colors. Why is it important to eat colorful food? Let's go ahead and put that there. Okay. For eight minutes. Eight minutes. Why is that important to eat colorful food? Yes, Julian or Tristan? Vitamins and nutrients. Thank you, bingo, vitamins and nutrients. So the plant foods, fruits and vegetables are very colorful and they are filled with vitamins and nutrients. Please go ahead and uh, either you or your adult put your dish into the oven for about eight minutes. All the vegetables should be in there now. Everything should be coated with all the oils and the cornstarch and the brown sugar and then put it in the oven keep it your, it's still at 425 and you're going to bake it for about eight more minutes okay oh, you don't need that yet we'll, we'll get it out with that so if you would give me the thumbs up if you have put your baking dish in the oven wait what what what, what were we doing so we're all the so vegetables should be mixed in now with okay. all your sauces and your flavors except the sesame yes, seeds and that goes back into the oven for eight more minutes okay i'm gonna go set the timer thank you there you go get your stool back so you can <laughs> it. how's everybody doing Nine. Okay, so it's in the oven and you've got your timer set for about eight minutes, correct? Huh? How okay, high are we great. saying the oven? Yes. How I high didn't are we hear that saying question. Give her a thumbs up so that they hear No, you heard. You got it. I couldn't hear. How high are we saying the oven? Well, what four and a quarter, 425. It, sh it should be where it was when you took the pan out the first time. Right. For eight minutes. You guys know what else? All of those vegetables that went in there, you can eat without cooking them you know you can just eat them without cooking them and, you, and they're just as good and they're really good for you so you don't have to always cook them right so how many of you have had uncooked red sweet peppers before not me i know a, yeah. a few yeah. of you yes and what do you how do you eat them do you eat them just plain raw or do you dip them in something i eat them plain raw you eat them plain because they're so sweet yes uh, over at Andrea's house, how do you eat them? Uh, we slice them and we usually eat them with some ketchup. Timer set. In ketchup? Hummus. <laughs> hummus. <laughs> yes. yes. Hummus is a great way of dipping raw vegetables. Excellent. Magnolia, how do you like your red peppers? 
Um, sometimes I eat them plain, but I like them with ranch. With ranch, of course. Well, pretty much anything tastes good with ranch. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that, that was great. Um, so while we're waiting for that to continue cooking soy sauce. with soy sauce, another, another good, good choice, um, I'd like to ask you to tell me about your favorite vegetables. What are your favorite vegetables? Yeah. Magnolia. Um, my favorite vegetable vegetable is okra. Okra. Um, that yeah, is that's yeah. really yes. That I would say uh, that's mm -hmm. your experience with vegetables. Yes, yeah. okra. It's I a love okra too. Yes, yeah. it's a beautiful plant. Um, and Magnolia, what was your favorite? Um, probably asparagus. Oh, excellent! Uh, mine would be, as well. Mine yeah. would be peas. Peas, good. very good. Love peas too. Anybody else? Mine would be corn. Corn, yes. Oh, I favorite. love that. Yeah. Sure. Well, this is a good time to eat corn. Have yeah. you had some yet this summer? Mm, no. Mm. Some corn on the cob. So mm -hmm. if you go to bang, any bang, of the bang, bang, bang. if you go to any of the farmers markets. You can get fresh, locally grown corn. There you go. You may be growing some in your own backyard, yes. which is wonderful. Excellent. Yes. Um, so here's another question. Hey, they have corn. Andrea has corn. Who? Andrea has corn. Okay. Yes. Yes. I saw the picture. Yes. Um, what's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable? Or what is the important what, what about fruits are the same in every single fruit and what makes it different from a vegetable? It's kind of a trick question. <laughs> what makes a fruit a fruit and makes it different than a vegetable? Anybody know? And it has, uh, let me think a second. Uh, and it usually grows above ground. I mean, fruits have more sugar than vegetables. That's actually true. The fruits it, do have more readily available sugar. And it usually grows above ground, and most vegetables grow underground. Um, well, again, that's a, not that, that there's some vegetables that grow underground, and I cannot think of a fruit that grows underground. Denise, do you know fruit that grows underground? A fruit. No. And if you think about the, 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 there's one thing about fruits that makes them different than vegetables, and it has to do with mostly what's inside of a fruit. Seed. Let's see. Pardon? The seed inside of. All fruits have seeds. All seeds so have. Even though people call oh. zucchini a vegetable or tomatoes a vegetable, they're actually. All fruits like have seeds, but not all seeds have, have fruit. Seeds. All fruits have so, seeds. Having said that, can you think of a fruit that grows underground? I cannot. So I think fruits grow on bushes or trees or vines, and some vegetables do grow underground. And there's probably an exception there somewhere. So, so what have you been, uh, how have you been eating fruits and vegetables this summer? What are your favorite available? We already talked about vegetables. What about your favorite fruits this summer? Peaches and corn. Peaches, 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 and more peaches. Peaches and corn, yes. Excellent. You know, when we meet no. next and month. And then some nectarines. Nectarines, very good. <laughs> and that My apple. Probably strawberries. Strawberries. Now, strawberries are, are already getting out of season here because it's got so hot. They tend to be earlier. Black strawberry season. Um, I'll say it. Black uh, blackberries. We have peaches. And in fact, our recipe next month will be a peach, watermelon, tomato salad. Ooh. Pardon me. Peach, cantaloupe, tomato salad. So yeah. we'll get to see yeah. that. that'll all be locally grown produce. So that's going to be really yummy and different. Is yes, there Magnolia. is there sugar in it? Hang on, Magnolia. What is your question? 
Never mind, sorry. I was just saying something about something else. Oh, you can go ahead, honey. What was it? Oh, I was just saying that um, probably um, blueberries for summer. Blueberries. And bl local blueberries are happening now uh, in our area. So you can go to the farmer's market. About two minutes to go. To local stores and you can get blueberries. I like blackberries. And you can go pick your own blueberries also. There's several farms. So for you grownups that are listening, the Urban Seeds website, urbanseeds.org, we have a list of all of our local farmers within a, a 100 mile radius. And many of them have their own farm station <laughs> and many of them have you pick. So it's all listed there on our website if you wanted to find out where you can go and pick berries. Or <laughs> so our timer went off at eight minutes. How many of you have had your timer I go off? <laughs> Okay, so you want to use hot mitts. One more minute to go about and take my timer. Your about one more and set it on something that won't burn your counter. Seconds. So go ahead and, and you can finish it up. You should so all once be the timer soon. goes off, yeah, and the seeds. What's that, babe? When once the timer goes off, yeah, and the sesame seeds. Well, yes, but in just a second, you are all about those sesame <laughs> seeds, aren't you? So I yeah. wanted to point out to you that this is what roasted vegetables look like. You've probably had them, but you can see that they're gently browned on the top. They're cooked to perfection. You can see at the bottom of the pan, there's lots of that soy sauce and oil left. So that when you serve it, you could scoop from the bottom and get some of the liquid, or you could stir the liquid in one more time. Now you're going to take your sesame seeds. Sebastian, are you ready? Yes. As soon as and the timer goes off. You're going to just sprinkle them all over the top of your dish. I'm ready. Looks yummy. And if you're still waiting for your dish to come out of the oven, you can do that as soon as it does come out. Mm -hmm. Who's eaten sesame seeds before? Who's had them in Chinese food or Asian food dinners? Yeah, Those of you in this house. Who else? I have to get, no. Chris has, yes, very good. I have. And Sebastian, okay. Oh, and Marie, so most of you have. Sesame seeds are not that unusual, especially if your family happens to like uh, Asian influenced food. So we've got our dish complete. Yep, How many of you are still waiting for it to come out of the oven, please? Okay, so Julian and Tristan are waiting. Look, that looks like burnt. So, so some of you have had it out. So if you're with a grown up, remember the glass plate is really hot. You can take a fork, which I neglected to bring one over, but you can take a fork and you can certainly go ahead and poke into either the cauliflower or the broccoli or the snow pea. I'd love to have you taste it and tell us what you think. Also, please take a photograph, have your, your grown up take a photograph, and maybe you can post it on our Facebook page or on the Evansville Vanover Public Library Facebook page. We'd love to see your finished product, your finished baking dish. You can do that. You can do that. Remember that it's hot when you get ready to taste it. Yes. yes. Just remember that this is, this is a hot dish. So, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and have a taste and tell us what you think? Because I don't want that to pop up again. So what? Did you stir this? Oh, okay. Got my picture. Thank right. you. I'm going to go oh, ahead and have the first taste. I'm going to taste a piece of cauliflower. It's small. I got I'm some carrots. carrots. I got some sesame seeds. Careful. It's just out of the oven. No, it's not that hot. Okay, good. Mm. Robin, is, if you can't hear her, she's going, mmm, mmm, this is really good. <laughs> so... These vegetables are very crunchy. That, in case you're interested, is called al dente. It's a way of cooking vegetables so that they're cooked through, but they're not mushy or too soft. So al dente, they tasted to me to be absolutely perfect. Come on over and have a taste too, please. There you go. Yeah, you do. Who's had a taste? Huh? Am I the only one that's had a taste? You want to take a bite? I'll give you a bite. I mean, you're not obligated to, of course, but I'm not going to try it. 
I'm going to try a pea. What do you want to try? And some red pepper. I don't like peas that much, so I can't eat them. We're going to try some peas. Thanks for trying my favorite vegetable. <laughs> Yep. What's he doing? Delicious. And, re and they're really crunchy. The vegetables are still really crunchy. This is our pal Charles from the library <laughs> and his colleague Katie. We're all in this together. Anybody have any questions or comments or ideas about this dish? Does your kitchen smell yummy? Yep. And yes. is it Dalton? My kitchen Dalton. smells like Dalton. stir fry. Dawson, how do you like it? Dalton. Dalton. Good. <laughs> Good. Isn't that yummy? And it's very simple. Very, very simple. Very simple. Anybody else have anything they want to share about their dish and the flavor? Would you yeah, make this again? Hour, but it's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. Yes. Yeah. What do you think you'll make this again on your own with a grown up in attendance? Maybe, yeah. but not with the same ingredients. <laughs> what ingredients would you add? Yeah, I actually changed some. Yeah, you know, you can always add a little bit of meat with it, whatever you're, you know, you can like make like a beef stir fry. Beef yeah, stir fry? I've never heard of fry. What did you say? I've never heard of meat with stir fry. Oh yes, that, that there's all, all kinds of meat you could have added. We we are uh, didn't have a way to safely share, pardon me, share meat with you, so we chose not to put meat in this dish. But you can certainly add meat to it, or you could have this as a side dish and have a barbecued or a roasted chicken breast, you know, for your main course. So, the only one with or some rice. Yes. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to share before we go? No. Nah. Any questions? You know, I want to tell you this. You're all really smart. I love that you knew the answer to some of the tougher questions that we asked today. So thank you for participating. For us, it was really fun on our end. I hope it was fun on your end as well. If your grown-ups are there, if you could ask them to make a comment on either the EBPL Facebook page or the Urban Seeds Facebook page, we'd appreciate that. And it's our pleasure to share this local food with you all. We hope you had a good time. Yep. Our legacy taste of the garden. Thank you. Thank Our you. legacy taste of the garden. Thank taste. you. You're welcome. And remember, next month it'll be tomato, cantaloupe, and peach salad. Really unusual, very fresh, very delicious. Yeah. We'll see y'all soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye, Andrea. <laughs> see you.